What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Kyle Van Noy. This is the KVN Show. I'm Kyle Van Noy, if you didn't know. Loose the football, scooped up by Van Noy! Groin injury, but Van Noy on the other side makes a play this time. Jim pressure's coming, Tannehill is sacked! Kyle Van Noy! Date at Seattle, coming up, and this is a pick by Kyle Van Noy. And Van Noy is in for the touchdown! Well, we're gonna talk about and discuss a lot of different things this week. A lot of good. Week 15 game, Jacksonville, and the other games that went on this week. We're gonna preview into week 16. We're gonna talk about random shit, and the random shit is not so random this week. We're gonna talk about the Chargers firing of the head coach and the GM. No bueno. Then lastly, my favorite part, the flowers. We're gonna give our flowers to who deserves them this week. Ravens versus Jaguars, Sunday night football. Oh, one of the best venues that you can play in. Jacksonville, Duval. I mean, the hype is real down there. The fans are amazing for Jacksonville. They talk a lot of trash, but they can't back it up this weekend. Yikes. 1-0 for the Ravens, clinched the playoff spot. So we're in the playoffs. That's amazing. All the Ravens fans. Clap it up, you deserve it. Yes, we deserve it as well. A lot of hard work into this, but we ain't done yet. We need to go for that number one seed and we gotta win the AFC North. That being said, let's get into it. First of all, we gotta talk about Kyle Hamilton coming back, not from the dead, but if you would have told me on Monday, Kyle Hamilton was playing in this game, I would have said bullshit, ain't no way. Saturday, if you would have told me Kyle Hamilton was playing in this game, I would have told you, bullshit, no way. Sunday, my guy arises from the dead. I mean, feeling good. I guess he was doing high knees in his, his room. He woke up and said, you know what? I'm gonna go today. And guess what? He went and he played and he played a really good game. Shout out to you, Kyle Hamilton, you are a dog. Now let's get into the good, the bad, and the great. The good in this game was the defense. I feel like we did a really good job containing their really good players. Evan Ingram didn't have a big night. Calvin Ridley didn't have a big night. Travis Etienne didn't have a big night. I mean, we did a really good job controlling their best players and taking those guys away. Uh, kudos to Mike McDonald having a great plan, but kudos to the secondary executing that play. Marlon Humphrey had a bounce back game from the Rams game. B. Steves, he was mic'd up in the game. I'm excited to hear it. He did a good job as well. And, you know, Trevor Lawrence getting the ball out very fast. I mean, as a defensive player, that game, that sucks for us. Like, he was like, down, set height, throw the ball. Down, set height, throw the ball. And it, it gets kind of, you know, annoying when that happens during a game because you want sacks. The defense, want D-line wants some sacks, you know? We're trying our hardest. And we only got one or two, I believe. And that happened to be Justin Matabike who had his 11th in a row sack, which is amazing. I would say that was the good in this game. Defense holding it down, holding that offense to only seven points. Really, really good. All right, the bad in this game, let's just, you know, state the obvious it goes to keaton mitchell i mean not because of his play but because of his injury he had a season ending injury which is never fun to deal with never good he was really exploding onto the scene i mean he was toting that rock he was really really coming alive and the confidence was gaining it sucks that he goes down offense is gonna have to have that next man up mentality justice gus and Melvin are gonna have a chance to really tote the rock themselves and be game changers like they have been. They're gonna have to uh, step it up a little bit with Keaton Mitchell coming out. The great in this game, I, I have three that are just great in this game. So let's start with number one, the O-line with the running backs and Lamar rushing for over 250 yards on 42 carries. Man, if that's not bully ball, I don't know what is. So props to all of them. That is the great in the game. Another great is Isaiah Likely coming alive. Mark Andrews goes down with a, you know, his injury. And Isaiah Likely just coming alive. He had a touchdown and a couple big catches. Lastly, 
Lamar Jackson being great. I mean, his MVP campaign is looking to the ceiling, boy. I mean, and there is no ceiling. He is one of one. He is must watch TV right now. You like are on the edge of your seat. I'm on the edge of my seat on the bench trying to watch him. I mean, I can only imagine what it's like at home watching him on TV. He's incredible right now and sky's the limit for Lamar on his MVP tour. Got to keep it going though. That is the great. Let's talk about situational awareness and the half. Jacksonville hits a big play down the sideline and scramble, scramble. What's going on? All right, this is what's going on. Jacksonville trying to huddle, hurry up to the ball, trying to take a shot to the end zone to get in before halftime because we actually get the ball. So they're trying to get points. Well, they screwed up. I felt like they got a little greedy. I felt like they should have either spiked the ball, take a chill pill, but they ran a play. And we knew what the play was because before the play, Trevor Lawrence was tapping his head. What's that mean? That means the outside receivers are running two fade balls and the slot receivers are running quick five yard outs. We had that prepared because the year prior, they actually scored on the exact same play. So we had a play call to play outside leverage in this. Marcus Williams makes a great play staying in bounds, keeping the clock rolling. And guess what? They ran out of time and no points on the board. Side note on this, Marcus Williams got hurt on this play and he had the smarts to get up and just play the next play. Because if he laid on the ground, we would have had to burn a timeout. Therefore, they would have kicked a field goal and got points. Felt like Jacksonville got a little greedy. They should have probably spiked it, you know, got things settled down, but they hurried up. They ran their play and we were ready for it. And kudos to our coaches and the players being on it. Situational football wins games. That was a big play and a key turning point in the game. Another highlight, we're gonna go on the offensive side of the ball. We have to talk about this MVP play from Lamar to Likely. What a play this was on offense. The pocket broke down, smooth coming around. Defenders around him goes up and ugh, snags that thing from two defenders. Straight up, Randy Moss them both. That's gonna be on Randy Moss segment. It better be, or it was better be on Sports Center top ten, whatever, because that was elite. That was an elite play. Isaiah Likely with a great, phenomenal play. Lamar making it happen. He is must watch TV right now. That is my highlight of the day for the offense. All right, let's talk about the big game that we previewed the week prior. Buffalo versus the Cowboys. Buffalo 31 to 10. Woo! We did not see this one coming. 268 yards on the ground for Buffalo. 25 carries, 179 yards for James Cook. The little cook, he was cooking in this game. And my goodness, Cowboys, what happened? They played bully ball and you couldn't do nothing. And I mean, ah, it was frustrating to watch because they have so many good players. Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, and that entire defense didn't look like themselves. Can they only play good inside when it's warm? Can, are they a dome team? I don't know. They're gonna have to go back to the drawing board a little bit after this one. They lost Zach Martin. I felt like that hurt him offensively because Dak was under duress the entire game and they just looked kind of disorganized as a team and they just weren't ready to go and they go back on the road in Miami who's playing really well that's going to be another game to watch in week 16 but man Cowboys laid an egg on a primetime game versus a really good Buffalo team who's just coming along I mean they're hot right now and they're trying to get to these playoffs and I don't think anybody really wants to play them in the playoffs, but they're playing really, really well. All right, quick hits in some other games. You had the Saturday night, the Vikings versus the Bengals. Bengals, Jake Browning wins in overtime. I mean, he told y'all, why did y'all cut me? And he proved why he's been balling as the QB 
of the Bengals. I mean, Joe Burr is letting his family have the box. He's feeling himself. He didn't start off good in this game, but he bounced back and got a dub. The Bengals defense also stepped up getting turnovers and sacks. They got the dub. Vikings gave up a lot of points in the fourth quarter. Yikes. Yikes for the Vikes. That's not good. Lose in overtime. Now, let's go to another game I watched. Texans versus the Titans. I mean, overtime game. Coming back, Case Keenum playing for the injured. CJ Stroud on the road, down. Come back, tie it, going to OT and get a dub. But Will Levis, he's showing me some things. I like his game. He got hurt in the game, that sucks. But he's showing me some flashes. I, I think he might have that dog in him, I don't know. Quick thoughts, last game, Browns versus the Bears. I mean, this had to be the missed opportunity game for the Bears. They had three big key ones that I can point out. Had to be number one was the missed touchdown in the beginning, dropped by the tight end Tunyon. I mean, wide open, dropped it. Justin Fields, beautiful ball, dropped it. That's seven points off the board. Another one, Justin Fields kind of at the end of the game, fourth down, scrambles, almost gets it, gets nicked, didn't get it, was a yard short on a fourth down. And then lastly, the Hail Mary. Oh, brutal. Hail Mary, end of the game. The receiver had it in the Just missed opportunities left and right. Let's give kudos to Joe Flacco and the Browns. Down 10 in the fourth quarter, come back and win this game. Man, they're playing really well. Player's point of view, my point of view of week 16. Here we go. Saints versus the Rams. Saints versus the Rams. I believe this is going to be a great game. Thursday night football. Woo -wee. Saints on the road, coming back off a win. Same with the Rams. Rams beat the Commanders. This is going to be a good game, I think. Both have veteran QBs. Matthew Stafford right now is playing really, really good. He's got two receivers that he's keyed on. They have a run game. Higby's back. I mean, they're they're kind of working on all cylinders. Defensively, they were playing pretty good, and I feel like they've skidded a little bit. You know, giving up 20 points to the Commanders is really good because their offense has some good weapons. But they're going to be the reason if they win this next game, stopping Derek Carr. Can the Saints defense do what they always do, harass quarterbacks, play really good, complimentary with the rush versus the coverage? You know, they have a tough matchup going against the Rams. They're playing really well on a short week. How are they going to defend McVay? McVay be slicing and dicing with these play calls. I believe it's going to be a really good matchup, and it has playoff implications who's gonna get the dub i'm gonna go with the rams in this one Bengals versus steelers Ooh -wee. divisional game gonna be a lot on the line for both teams also trying to get in the playoffs both teams steelers kind of struggling Bengals on the rise who's gonna get it done is jake browning gonna continue his streak on the road can he get the job done I believe in this Bengals team right now. They're playing inspired football. Jake Browning is playing, playing. They also have T. Higgins. Is Jamar Chase shoulder gonna be okay? I don't know, but I'm still going with the Bengals because they got Joe Mixon on the ground as well as Tyler Boyd still and T. Higgins, who is a number one to me. Browns winning with a comeback in the fourth quarter. Playoff implications in this one. The Texans trying to come back and get the one seed in the AFC South. And then the Browns are trying to catch us. This game means a lot to both teams. Playoff on the line. This is a playoff football game. Joe Flacco going into a environment of the Texans with that defense and that D line getting after QBs right now. I think D'Amico Ryan's defense is playing phenomenal. I believe in this Texans team right now going against the Browns. C.J. Stroud coming back off his concussion. I think C.J. Stroud's going to do some things against that stout defense of the Browns. 
I, I think I'm going with the home team. I'm going with the Texans in this one. Okay, the matchup a lot of people have had circled for a while. The Niners, the one seed in the NFC. The Ravens, the one seed in the AFC. A lot of drama is gonna be talked about in this game. Mike McDonald versus Shanahan. Offense, Mwah. defense, Mwah. two gurus going at it, chess match. Brock Purdy, MVP. Lamar Jackson, MVP. And you can't forget about Christian McCaffrey, also playing at MVP level. And just the defense. Are they number one defense? Are we number one defense? A lot of headlines in this one. This is the game you want to be. If you love football, Monday night, 8.15, Santa Clara, because it's not San Francisco, that's where you want to be, Levi Stadium. I'm excited to play in this one. This one is going to have so much juice. Their team is full of dogs. Our team's full of dogs. I'm excited for this one. This one is going to be a game. I'm obviously going to go with my team. One of my little brothers, Fred Warner, is on the other side. So I know what he's going to do, and I know what I'm going to do. It's going to be just an uh, all-out war, and I'm excited for it. This is the random news segment in the show, but it's not so random because it was splashed everywhere. Let's talk about the Chargers firing Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco. All right, let's get into it. Um, I'm not going to spread tea. I'm not going to be spreading salt on the wound. Let's just dive into it. I think this stems from the last year, 27 to zero um, playoff game that the Chargers lost. I was there. Uh, it sucked. And then I think it's stemmed over to now. Uh, defensively, I don't think they really have. At zero the week before something needs to happen so I think a lot of the blame goes to the head coach and you know rightfully so he's uh, the main voice of the team but I also think need blame needs to go around to everyone I think it needs to go to players I think it needs to go to personnel and a lot of people in the personnel department you know that have a say that are behind the scenes I, I believe they tried with a personnel decision because that system uh, that Staley runs, you need a all pro, pro bowl type corner. I'm not saying the ones that they have um, can't be that because I think one is on his way to, if he continues to develop, continues to make plays. Um, but they need a player like Jalen Ramsey, uh, Xavier Howard or prior when they were with the Broncos um, as well as who they had in Chicago that's what that system needs that's how they're good um, and they didn't have that and they tried but it failed and that hurt them in the process of developing an identity and developing uh, that defense, you know, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Now looking forward in this situation, Justin Herbert, this is going to be his third coach in five years. And that is crazy. And he needs somebody to grow with, somebody that's going to challenge him, somebody that's going to continue to get him to become a leader and learn how to win consistently in this league. I believe they can do that with a Ben Johnson type, somebody that is an offensive minded head coach. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. You know, maybe when I'm done out of the NFL, I'll say more. I don't think I'm gonna get too much tea into this, but maybe you got some from that clip, those clips, however you want. You know, sorry, Chargers fans. Let's get to it. My favorite segment, the flower segment, the flowers. I got some flowers. Yes, the flower segment. Who's gonna get the flowers this week? I'm gonna go with Mr. Beast. My man, Mr. Beast, he's a YouTube content creator. He does a lot, he gives back a lot. It's awesome to see. He did a challenge for a guy, stay in a supermarket, 
Every day you stay in there, 10K a day. The guy made $450,000. Mr. Beast, you're the man for that. He also did another challenge where he did two random people, $500,000, they would split. They had to last 100 days together. And then within that challenge, he would give them every 10 days, they could buy something for 10 grand. They charged it all the way to $380,000. And then the two got to split it on the last day. Mr. Beast, with all you do around the world, giving back Africa wells, everything, you deserve the flowers. Yes, smell them, Mr. Beast. Okay, next, I'm gonna go with Leon Edwards. UFC champion, he dominated Colby Covington this weekend. You deserve the flowers, especially after what he said to your dad. That was messed up, Leon, but you deserve the flowers for being his ass in the cage. All right, my last set of flowers goes to Nicki Minaj. Best rap, female rapper ever. You could argue her as one of the best rappers ever. You deserve some flowers, Nikki. You're elite, elite at what you do. You can rap. You got a couple bops on your new album that I, I like. You deserve the flowers. All right, everybody. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to my weekly show, The KVN Show. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. You know, comment on what y'all want to hear next. I love y'all. Can't wait to see you again. Can't wait to talk to you again. Give me some feedback. Appreciate y'all. Peace and love. I'm Kyle Van Noy, if you didn't know. Loose the football, scooped up by Van Noy. Groin injury, but Van Noy on the other side makes a play this time.